Willie D. Live. What's up, family? We got a man named Dwayne Youngblood who detailed a traumatic teenage experience with Bishop T.D. Jakes, where he was violated. Yeah, fam. This is cold-blooded right here, fam. Dwayne said it started when he was around 18, 19 years old, and T.D. Jakes was coming to town to preach. He said that he convinced his mom to let him drive her car to take T.D. Jakes out to eat, as T.D. Jakes was pretty much his hero. He really looked up to T.D. Jakes. He said that in his uh, city, there was a lady named Sister Giles who always wanted to house T.D. Jakes whenever he came to town. So he was 18, 19 at the time, and he scooped up T.D. Jakes. They uh, went to dinner. They talked for about two hours. He sat at the table for the first time talking to a man and had tears rolling down his face because, he, as he said, finally somebody got him. No pun intended. Dwayne said they talked about a myriad of things, including his father. He said after they finished talking, he got up because he realized that he had to get his mom her car back. And as he got up to walk around the table, Jakes stopped him and tried to kiss him. Yeah. He said he didn't know how he got out of that, but he got out. The next day, Jakes calls his mom's house and his mom goes, Wayne, uh, Bishop Jake's on the phone. He go and get on the phone and he can hear water. He hears water. He says the man is in the bathtub talking to him. He's sitting in the bathtub. And he said that there's three things I want you to do. When I come to Pittsburgh, you're going to be the only one I sleep with. Two, you can't sleep with anyone else because I don't want to give my wife anything. Three, I will take care of you for the rest of your life. He said that he had made his mind up. He was not going to church that day, but his mom forced him to. She said, you know, we got a rule in this house. If we go, you go. He said that night during service, the most humiliating thing happened. T.D. Jakes got up there and called him to read scripture. He said, the good bishop said, I'm going to ask my young minister, young blood, to read for me. Who believes Dwayne? Thumbs up if you believe Dwayne Youngblood. Thumbs down if you say, no, man, he lying, he lying. Ain't no way T.D. Jakes did something like that. He lying on that man. What are your thoughts? I'll give you a few minutes. Time's up. Say, fam, listen. I believe him. I believe him. I was about to say I don't know why, but I believe him. But no, I know why I believe him. Because I've heard these type of stories before. And Jake's got that type of vibe, man. And he laid it out, fam. He laid it out very simply. Was no ahs and stumbling and looking off to the left, trying to figure out, you know, what he was going to say. Nah, fam. I believe the dude. I mean, I, obviously, you know, I could be wrong. He could be lying. He could be lying. But I don't believe he's lying. I believe that T.D. Jakes is operating in the capacity that many people who are in the clergy does. And that is being a wolf in sheep clothing. Yeah, he good, man. Yeah, you know, Potter's House got a lot of members and 
there are a lot of decent people that go there and, and I know they don't want to hear that about their pastor but T.D. Jakes feet don't walk on water T.D. Jakes is a man and that's what we have to understand about these pastors they are simply human beings they bleed they breathe it requires oxygen for them to live or they will die if they get their kidneys blown out, they're going to need a replacement or they're going to die. If you poke them, if you puncture their skin, they are going to bleed. If they get a cold, they are going to need some type of medicine to get through. They breathe and bleed just like everybody else. But I don't know when it happened, but I guess it happened a few hundred years ago, maybe a thousand, but people just put too much focus, too much trust in members of the clergy. And they automatically get passes just because they are members of the clergy, especially pastors. People automatically trust them to stay. And this is what allows them to pray so easily and get away with so much. Because check this out. A lot of times people find out what they're really about and they won't call them out because it would destroy grandma's memory. It would hurt their father's relationship with the pastor. You know, a lot of times you have generations of, of families who have been members of a church. And, you know, to cause such attention would bring about a scandal that the church possibly may not be able to recover from. So nobody really wants to put that out there. It's kind of like if you have a, a predator in the family. Nobody really wants to call out Uncle Calvin and say he did this and he did that because you know that it is going to destroy relationships, right? I say call them out and let the chips fall where they may. These predators must be stopped. Do not give them a pass. They are counting on you feeling guilty about exposing them expose them. And here's the thing. If you care about your community like you say you do, if you care about others like you say you do, you got to expose them because if you don't, they're going to go unchecked and they're going to continue to violate people the way they violated you. Had somebody spoken up sooner, perhaps it wouldn't have happened to you. Somebody got to have the courage to say, you know what? I don't care. I'm calling this fool. I don't care what happened. I don't care who want to disassociate themselves with me. I don't care who get mad. I don't give a damn. You know, point a finger at me and try to put shame on me. I'm going to point 10 more back at you because ain't no way I should feel shame when I'm the one that was violated. So I say, call them suckers out, man. Expose them. Expose all of them. But what say you, fam? Drop a comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts. No more talk.